Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most enigmatic anime out there, Dot Hack Sign. Dot Hack Sign was the first series in the Dot Hack franchise. We'll get into the history about the show a little bit later, but before we get any further, make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you never miss any updates. Now, without further ado, let's get it. Dot Hack is a Japanese multimedia franchise that encompasses two projects, Project Dot Hack and Dot Hack Conglomerate. They were created by CyberConnect2 and published by Namco Bandai Entertainment. The series centers around the rise of a new version of the internet following a major global computer network disaster in the year 2005, and the mysterious events regarding the wildly popular fictional MMORPG, The World. The series mainly comprises anime and video games, which have been subsequently adapted into manga, novels, and other related media. Project Dot Hack was the first project of the Dot Hack series. It launched with the anime Dot Hack Sign on TV Tokyo, April 4th, 2002. This show eventually ran until September 25th, 2002. Unlike some of the other entries in the series, Dot Hack Sign is not an adaptation of any manga rather kickstarting the franchise. Ultimately, Dot Hack Sign ran for 26 episodes. So let's get into the story. One day, Tsukasa, a seemingly aloof and detached player, awakens in a video game called The World, with no memory of how he got there or even of his own identity. He soon discovers that he possesses unique abilities such as summoning a powerful creature known as a Twilight Guardian and the ability to warp between different areas of the world at will. These powers draw the attention of the Crimson Knights, a group of players tasked with maintaining order within the world, led by their captain, Silver Knight. The Crimson Knights thus perceive Tsukasa as a threat and label him a hacker. Wait a minute, a virtual reality game? A group of bloodthirsty knights in red and white drip? A video game called an evil leader who's after the main character. The protagonist being accused of hacking to beat the game. What in the Kirito is this? Knights of the Blood Oath, the World Tree, Beaters. Oh, and did I forget to mention Tsukasa's trapped in the video game? On today's episode of Judge Judy, the plaintiff accuses the defendant of blatant plagiarism. This <laughs> stole my drip. Run me my money. I rest my case. Meanwhile, other players become intrigued with Tsukasa's enigmatic presence, particularly Mimiru, a seasoned player with a caring and compassionate nature, and Bear, a wise and experienced player who serves as a father figure to Tsukasa throughout the series. They, along with the other players like Krim, BT, Sora, and Helba, begin to unravel the mystery surrounding Tsukasa's predicament and seek to understand the truth behind his unique abilities. As the plot unfolds, it is revealed that Tsukasa's entrapment within the world is not a mere accident, but part of a grand plan orchestrated by Morgana, a powerful AI. Morgana's goal is to prevent the awakening of Aura, the ultimate AI, who holds the key to immense power within the game world. To achieve this, Morgana manipulated events and linked Aura to Tsukasa, effectively corrupting her and ensuring that she remains dormant forever. It is later revealed that Tsukasa is not just a player, but the alter ego of Anne Shoji, a troubled high school girl in the real world. So this is a whole catfish. Anne's life outside of the game is far from perfect. Having lost her mother at a young age and enduring abuse from her father, the world served as her refuge allowing her to escape the harsh realities of her existence and find solace in the virtual realm. Realizing that Tsukasa wanted nothing more than to remain in the world forever, Morgana sent her servant, Maka, to lure him into a trap. Acting as a friendly PC, Maka took Tsukasa to the bottom of a dungeon where a trap set by Morgana data drained him, trapping his mind inside of the world itself. To further trap him, to make sure that this went off without a hitch, Morgana altered his memories, making him believe he was a male in reality, as well as causing him to focus on the terrible memories from his father. 
Despite the challenges and dangers posed by Morgana's snakery, Sukasa finds unexpected allies along the way. In his confusion after the memory wipe, Sukasa was met by Subaru, the guild master of the Crimson Knights, who's confined to a wheelchair in the real world. Bruh. Subaru used the world as an escape too. Seeing each other as kindred spirits, the two began a relationship and started seeing each other frequently inside of the world. You can't keep getting away with it! Sukasa decided to show her aura, but upon arriving in the field where Aura had been, he saw that she had been taken elsewhere by Morgana. As punishment for bringing Subaru, Morgana tried to completely destroy his memory, leaving him in a vegetative-like state. However, Morgana failed to destroy him completely, and after a period of healing, he was able to recover his wits after receiving a message from Subaru. Traveling to Netslum, he was told the entirety of Morgana's plan by Helba, and realized that if he wanted to break free from her clutches, he would have to awaken Aura himself. It was here that Tsukasa realized that Morgana had been altering his memories to make him believe that he was a male in the real world. As up to this point, Tsukasa had no idea that he was in fact a different person in, outside of the real world. With the help of his friends and the unexpected aid of Maka, who had decided to betray Morgana, Tsukasa managed to travel to the place where she was holding Aura. There, he declared that he was no longer afraid of Morgana or of reality, and that he intended to log out and meet Subaru. This caused the binds on Aura to break, awakening her. In retaliation, Morgana summoned Skeeth to hunt him down, but some quick thinking by Helba allowed them to escape, and Tsukasa to wake in the real world after being trapped in the world for about six months. Leaving the hospital, and Shoji was met by Mariko Misono, the player behind Subaru. With tears in their eyes, the two embraced, having finally found what they've been searching for. And that wrapped 26 episodes of pure mystery. Dot Hack Sign is a thought-provoking anime that holds a special place in the heart of many fans, not only for its captivative storyline, but also for its significance as an early entrant into the internet era. Released in 2002, this anime series ventured into uncharted territory exploring the connections between virtual reality and the human psyche. As a viewer, I was drawn to the enigmatic world of and its cast of complex characters. One aspect that adds to the charm of Dot Hack Sign is its late night time slot on YTV Bionics and Cartoon Network. Airing during a time when the internet was still in its early stages, the series captured the curiosity and imagination of viewers. It was at a time when the internet was rapidly evolving and the concept of online gaming was an exciting novelty. Dot Hack Sign tapped into this emerging fascination with its exploration of an immersive virtual world. The anime's distinctive art style, characterized by muted colors and ethereal backgrounds, perfectly complemented the introspective and contemplative nature of the story. The languid pace of the series may have put off some viewers expecting a fast-paced action series, but it allowed for a deeper exploration of the character's emotions and motives. The atmospheric soundtrack composed by Yuki Kajuri further enhanced the vibe and introspective mood, creating a captivating ambiance that drew me further into the narrative. Years later in college, I decided to revisit Dot Hack Sign, and this time I did so with a different perspective. As I watched the series again, I found myself appreciating the intricacies of the plot and the psychological depth of the characters even more. It was during one of these revisits that I embarked on an unconventional viewing experience, watching the series while tripping my balls off. What unfolded was a truly immersive and mind-expanding journey. The philosophical themes and existential questions posed by the series took on a new dimension as I delved deeper into the psyche of the characters. The blurred boundaries between reality and virtual reality, the exploration of identity, and the exploration of self-discovery. Dot Hack Sign invites contemplation and introspection, and watching it while tripping balls only intensify those experiences for me. It offered a unique opportunity to engage with the series on a more profound level, prompting existential inquiries and stimulating discussions about the nature of reality itself human connection, and the consequences of running away from my problems via gaming. Also, that theme song was crazy as hell. Thanks for watching. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and slap the bell notification icon. You know what? Don't even slap it. Punch the bell notification icon so you never miss another update. And until next time, peace.